Hello, welcome to Lazada Insider, featuring knowledge that makes a difference. We share trusted insights, forward-looking perspectives, and exclusive expert interviews to keep you ahead of the curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Lazada Insider, and I'm your host Katrina from Lazada. In our previous episode, we had the pleasure of hearing from Manal Rathor, partner at BCG and also the program director of Rise. And we discussed about the importance of continuous learning and the necessary skill sets for the future of work. Today, we'll be discussing the potential solutions to narrow the skill set gap. And to add valuable insights from a business practitioner perspective, we have another special guest joining us today, Ying Le Tian, the third generation owner of Yong Sing Heng Farm, a family owned business specialized in dark farming with over 50 years of history. And Le Tian has also participated in the Rise for Business program. So thank you so much, both of us, for joining us today. So let's quickly take off today's discussion by knowing a bit more about our guest today. Uh, Munal, could you tell us more about yourself? Sure. Uh, so my name is Munal. I'm a partner with the Boston Consulting Group in Singapore. I've been with BCG now for almost nine years and have worked across uh, multiple geographies, sectors and topics. I'm also a program director for BCG's RISE program, uh, which is in partnership with Skills Future Singapore. Uh, RISE stands for Rapid and Immersive Skills Enhancement, and it focuses on lifelong learning for individuals as well as companies, especially SMEs like YSH Farm. Great. Latin, I would also love to know more about you and your company. And I'm also curious about, you know, what business priorities or challenges that your company is trying to address from a digital perspective. My sisters and I are actually the third generation of our family business and we do dark farming and distribution. It, um, our company, YSH Farm, was started in the 1970s by our grandparents in Lim Chu Kang. And in the early 2000s, my dad and my uncle took over the business and currently we have us, my, my two sisters and I. So um, as a traditional business, there are many business challenges that our company is trying to solve digitally. Um, for one, it is digitalizing the operations process. For us, the question that we have or the problem that we're trying to solve is how may we tap on digital transformation to increase our efficiency and productivity? And then we do have other challenges. Um, one will also be um, for us to leverage on people spending more time online to engage in more productive sales and marketing. So how do we as a business who has been around in decades um, keep up with the times? Because for us, we are a traditional business. We have been doing business for 50 years and a lot of our sales and marketing is done through word of mouth. Um, hence, I mean, on one hand, we are very thankful that we do have strong referrals from our existing customer base, but we also do want to um, gain more exposure, leveraging on the digital world. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so Manal, in our previous conversation, we discussed about acquiring the necessary skill sets. Uh, it is actually required to excel in the digital age for both business and individuals. So um, how can business actually support their employees in developing such skill sets? And what are some ways um, companies can motivate employees to step up, to learn, and to try something new. Yeah. So, you know, as part of the Rise for Business program uh, and even, you know, other work that I've been uh, doing uh, with the government as well as, you know, companies, I've interacted now with hundreds of SMEs. And I think they have a unique dilemma when it comes to uh, people and how do they build the right talent pipeline to achieve their aspirations. First, it can be very difficult for them to match corporate compensation, especially when the market is bullish. And even then, if they've managed to find the right talent, you know, there's always the fear of attrition and that they'll you know, lose for a job with a bigger company. When the market is bearish, SMEs are already stretching the dollar when it comes to you know, many different priorities. Costs are going up, customer orders slow down. So they already have you know, a lot going on and it's difficult to invest in you know, building talent uh, at that time. 
Second, SMEs have uh, smaller teams and many of their employees may not come, you know, from the top universities, but they more than make up for it, you know, with their understanding and passion for the business and the firm that they are working with. As a business owner, SME leaders also want to support these employees, you know, who've been with them uh, for a long time. They may not have, you know, the right skills, but they really want to see how they can support their journey so that it also helps them to, you know, for the company as a whole to perform better. But often what they find difficult is to find, you know, credible and meaningful skilling, upskilling opportunities. And that's really the gap, you know, we are trying to fill with the Rise for Business program. And I'll also just add that, you know, sometimes companies may not have the right capabilities because they didn't need it because of the business model. So, you know, Letian will share uh, later, but YSH Farms, you know, didn't start with the marketing team. So in a way, Rise for Business was sort of like the starter, which got the door started uh, and is helping them think about, you know, uh, marketing in a new context. Yeah. Um, so Latian, I, I think that, you know, I would love to hear even more about the journey you went through. Um, so what actually motivated your company to focus on upscaling in digital skills? And, you know, did you face some of the challenges or obstacles that, um, you know, Manal just mentioned about during the process? And how do you actually overcome them? Yes, I totally um, agree with Manal. I feel like she understands an SME well. <laughs> so the points she covered, I can really relate to the pain. Yeah. Um, for us as dark farmers, um, we always look at our competitors, not our neighboring industry, I would say. So for us, it will be the chicken farmers. So um, I think it's quite obvious in Singapore that chicken farmers are doing very well. Uh, they have actually done... I would say pretty extensive digitalization on their part. Um, if you do a quick search, they have very good online presence. They have very good branding. So we always look at them for inspiration. If the chicken farmers can do it, why can't we as duck farmers? Yeah. So um, one of the first pointers Muna said was um, about resources. So a challenge that we face as an SME is that we do have tight resources. The whole process of digitalization, for example, like upgrading our ERP into like a cloud ERP or even building a website or even um, wanting to run marketing campaigns, these uh, require significant time and cost investment for us. We, as a traditional business, like I mentioned before, we have never had a, a marketing team. We, we had like, we do have a, a small on the ground sales team, but um, I think it's time for us to go to another level. Um, if, if the online space is doing well, why aren't we leveraging on that? So for us, since we do know that in terms of resources, we do have a bit of constraints. We also very thankful that um, for the rice cost, we are able to get grants for it. And then um, for this rice course as well, it is very practical it's because um, we get to work on our business problems during the course. So it, it's not like a time that we have to set aside to learn stuff only. We get to use the time to um, produce results. So it becomes very uh, productive, very efficient in a way of when, when we join the course. And then um, probably another challenge that I find would be um, if we are going to start digitalization, for example, when we started implementing a cloud-based ERP system, we need to have our employees uh, get on board with it because our existing employees are very used to the way things are run. They have their own system, um, but it may not be the most productive so I think having the employees be involved in the entire change process helps a lot. And when they see us doing it um, and us learning it as well, it motivates them to want to do it as well. And at the end of the day, is once they learn the system, the once they know that, hey, you know, all this digitalization, um, all these things that we are doing to improve the productivity, it saves their time. Then they feel more motivated to do it as well. 
Thanks for sharing. And I, I really love you share about, you know, the mindset journey that you went through and how you actually motivate your employees to, you know, start learning and see the early results and get even more motivated through digitalization. Um, and you mentioned about Rise for Business program. Let's talk more about it. So maybe Monal, you know, um, you, can, you can share us a bit more about what this program is about and what actually inspired the development of the program. Yeah, let me start with the uh, later part of your question. So there are, you know, two uh, different stories which came together, which are behind the genesis of Rise for Business. So first, you know, BCG is the leading expert when it comes to digital transformations. And it's not just me saying that. Even if you look at leading industry reports like Forrester, you'll find that, you know, we are ranked as the best. And we've been doing this for many, you know, years now for corporates across many sectors, geographies, to accelerate their digital journey and drive impact. But it was always, you know, we never tried doing it for SMEs, actually, because it wouldn't have worked, you know, at our uh, price point. We would have been just too expensive. So that was, you know, one part. We had all the ingredients, but just didn't uh, roll it out at scale for SMEs. Now, the second part of the story uh, goes back to 2020 when we started working with Singapore government on uh, especially Skills Future Singapore as part of the SG United program. And that's when the RISE was born. And the first iteration of RISE was for individual learners and specifically for uh, job seekers. And that's where we figured out, you know, how do we take all of that resident knowledge and experience that we have and package it into, you know, uh, bite-sized sessions for individual uh, job learners. Because I think what really differentiates RISE for Business is that we bring, you know, practical real-life experience from our journey with many, many uh, uh, clients. And we try to, you know, bottle it in a form that it can be consumed uh, by learners. And I think the other part of the question was, uh, you know, what is the RISE program uh, really about? So uh, we focus on, you know, three specializations, omni-channel sales and marketing, uh, which is really, you know, front of the house. How do you make um, customer outreach and go to market much more efficient? How do you look at, you know, uh, paid or performance marketing, uh, digital uh, lead generation, uh, omni-channel sales? Really, you know, how do you think about uh, your various options, whether you are a B2B uh, company or a B2C company, I think for every context, we have, you know, figured out the content uh, uh, and the specifics to be covered. Uh, and I think this specialization mainly is targeted at uh, individuals uh, uh, from a commercial background, so sales, marketing or business development or individuals that a company might be wanting to move into uh, that uh, role and they can really benefit from this program. The second one is focused more on data and analytics. And this is more of a, you know, horizontal capability building that we are focusing on. So it stretches right from, you know, customer segmentation, pricing to doing, you know, better operations, inventory management, and even, you know, corporate functions like uh, HR, finance. How do you really uh, use the power of data to drive better decision making and outcomes? And the third specialization that we have currently is called digital uh, growth and innovation. And here we are looking at companies who would like to, you know, fundamentally change the trajectory, uplift the trajectory of their growth by thinking about, you know, new markets, new products, new channels or new uh, uh, segments to um, grow uh, through. Uh, as part of, you know, their uh, next uh, uh, sprint. So these are, you know, the three specializations uh, that we are focusing on. And uh, Biosage Farms was actually part of our pilot branch that graduated just about a, a month ago. And uh, for us, actually, you know, overall, when we look at the uh, performance of all the companies and the uh, projects uh, that they uh, worked on, it's really heartening to see that many of them are already, you know, implementing uh, uh, their uh, uh, actions and they're already seeing, you know, um, a big sport, a spurt in growth, um, whether it is talking about, you know, lead generation or reaching out to more customers or even, you know, conversions. Uh, so uh, it, it's been a very exciting journey and we hope to reach more companies over the next uh, few years. 
Well, thanks for the great introduction of the program. And uh, yeah, so there are so many specializations that the participants can actually choose from, which is very exciting. And I think in general, digital skill sets is one of the most sought after skill sets um, currently. And, and I'm, I'm sure there are many uh, trainings out there in the market focusing on the same topic. So how does the Rise for Business program differentiate itself from the other programs? Uh, Manal, can you help us yeah. you know, address that? Yeah, so I think one, uh, you know, it was developed by practitioners who have, uh, you know, worked with many in many different contexts with many different organizations to drive impact. So while I think, you know, theory and uh, the academic concepts are uh, very, very important, it's very, I I think for companies and especially SMEs that uh, real life insight on how to make it work in many different contexts is critical. So I think there are really three things which differentiate uh, Rise for Business. First, you know, we are very application oriented. We cover the concepts, but then there is a lot of focus on, you know, uh, providing hands-on guidance. We have, you know, coaches who work with uh, the companies to help them uh, solve their, you know, business problems as part of the three specializations. Second differentiator is that it is very personalized. Uh, you know, it is aligned to the company's objectives and goals. Uh, we bring not just the learner, but also, you know, the company leadership along as we work on their uh, problem statements. So in the context of, say, YSH Farm, uh, they have been traditionally a B2B company and they wanted to think about how do they go direct to consumer. So we worked with them, uh, Letian and also, you know, others in the company to help uh, uh, develop, you know, a very customized plan, which they are now already implementing. And that's the third thing that's, you know, different about our program, which is the focus on impact and action. Uh, For us, I think it's important that we, um, you know, uh, work to identify the business critical problem and then, you know, actively work towards getting to uh, impact fast so that, you know, the companies can see those early quick wins and are encouraged and motivated to continue on their digital transformation journey. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Latin, you, you participate in the Rise for Business program and you already start to implement some of the plans. I would love to hear more from you, uh, your experience, what have you gained from the program and, and how did you leverage the support from uh, Rise for Business to address your business priorities? Um, for us at the start, we went in actually without clarity on our problem statement. So with the help of the mentors, you know, the all the experience gathered together, um, actually our business problem statement was fine-tuned along the way. So I think the biggest thing was the clarity in our problem statement. Our problem statement, um, if I may share, is like how are we able to generate more revenue with the eroding profits in our industry because ducks are being commoditized in in this in these days yeah so um with that in mind now we know that we we now we have the clarity and now we can focus on solving this problem statement so i think that's huge for us because without this clarity and without this focus we'll still be lost today so I'm very glad that um, we do have a team of very experienced mentors behind us to help us get to this point at the start. So with that, along the way, we came up with the, with the plan on how to launch our B2C plan, how to launch our B2C brand. At the end of the course, we are able to choose um, from two options. And the option that I chose was to work on an agency brief. So like I mentioned, as an SME, we do have very tight resources, so we wanted to leverage on the grants as well for us to um, launch our brand. So we engaged in an agency to help us build a website. So we created the agency brief. So I think going into the meeting um, with these agencies, now I know what are the things to look out for and what are the things that really matter. Because um, prior to joining the program, we did actually already build a website ourselves. But to us, we only thought that, you hey, you know, like digital marketing is just, you know, probably just creating a website and putting it online. 
But after going through the program, it actually is more than that. It's not just like creating a website and then having an online presence. Like, how do we make our brand well known? And actually, there are many numbers involved. And actually, it is a science behind it. Yeah. So, um, what we've gotten out of it is the the plan that we are implementing. And then in a few months' time, actually, BC, BCG and our mentors will follow up with us. And um, what I really like about the program is, like what Muna um, shared, it's the functionality of it. Um, I think for myself, I have taken other courses before. It's either very theory-based or it is just, okay, follow my instructions on how to do certain things. So I think for the RISE program, it is like in the middle. It explains to you all the concepts behind it, like why you're doing it. And after that, also implementing it that's very personalized to our own business problem. I think that you highlighted, you know, the practical knowledge, the coach um, is able to share with you to define the problem, to come up with a plan. And also in the process, it's very collaborative. It's very personalized to your business problem. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. And I also understand that, you know, uh, your business will very soon uh, and in the process of, uh, you know, trying to sell on Redmart, which is the grocery arm of Lazada. So maybe you can tell us a bit more about, you know, that starting stage of that journey. What ways has the program facilitated your journey okay so for a start right after we sort of drilled down on the problem statement and we decided that hey you know we are going to focus on our b2c we um actually my mentor um was julie so in the whole bcg rise program we were grouped with our mentor that will follow us throughout the whole journey so um we knew that we wanted to be in an e-commerce space so Julie linked us up and that's how we got started. Um, we are currently right now um, doing the finishing touches. So we are not fully live yet, and but we will be live soon. Yeah. For Manal, uh, I'm sure that, you know, the participants of Rise for Business program, they come potentially from a bit of diverse background and they have different skill sets levels to start with. So could you shed some light on how the training programs ensure the inclusivity, accessibility for all different learners? Yes, sure. So, um, you know, a few points that I would like to highlight. Uh, so from an inclusivity uh, perspective, the program has, you know, many different learning and teaching form formats. There are cohort level uh, sessions. There are, you know, one-on-one -on -one session, and then there are also sessions, you know, with coaches um, in working groups as well. So uh, what this allows us to do is, you know, um, manage the pace, especially for learners that might need more support. And also, you know, while working on their personalized, their custom problems, which are relevant for their business. So we also offer makeup, you know, classes for learners if they would like to, you know, go through certain concepts or clarify their thoughts. And the coaches really help us to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, learners and companies can reach out to them anytime, even, you know, outside of, say, the uh, uh, formal uh, class hours, if I can call it that. In terms of accessibility, you know, we want to um, get to a much more regular frequency. So in the future, um, uh, we are hoping to, you know, scale the program to quarterly batches so that every quarter companies can join us uh, on this journey. Uh, and in terms of, you know, affordability, um, SSG support actually makes the program um, very, very affordable. Um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us for more details on pricing. But uh, really, the goal is so that more and more companies can benefit from the program. And lastly, from um, the perspective of coverage, which is, you know, the kind of uh, skills or topics we cover, we started with the three specializations we talked about because that is where the skill gaps are the highest. And uh, with those, what we are trying to do is also, in addition to, you know, the concepts, the projects, the impact, really try to connect the dots and bring the power of our ecosystem and partners like Lazada and Redmart, you know, to our companies. And in the future, we also hope to, you know, expand to other topics like sustainability, perhaps. Thank you so much, uh, Munal and Latin. Thank you for sharing your valuable insights and your experience with us. Uh, really a lot of great learnings that I'm sure our audience will benefit from. So thank you so much once again for joining Lazada Insider. 
Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Lazada is delighted to join forces with BCG as content partner for the Rise for Business Omnichannel Sales and Marketing Program. Our collaboration is designed to empower business with the winning strategies, essential tools, and skills to thrive in the dynamic world of digital commerce. But don't just take our word for it. You heard from Le Tian, who has experienced the program firsthand, and she's one of our first batch of learners who have given us stellar ratings of 4.9 out of 5 stars. Together with BCG, with our combined expertise, we are very excited to continue bringing you even more compelling content that will propel you towards remarkable success in digital commerce. That's all from us today. Thank you. This is Susanna Insider. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you click follow and subscribe so you don't miss our latest insights and expert interviews. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take care. 